one. What's up, team? This is your boy, Zach Evanish. Good morning. I'm with my boy, Matt Reynolds. Haven't chatted with Matt for a long time, although um, Matt, really, I was thinking about this last night. I uh, paid Matt for co consulting for the gym business. I paid Matt to train me online when I wanted to hook grip deadlift 500 yeah. pounds with a with a bum knee. And uh, I'm excited that Matt's here. We're going to be talking about something that is uh, not just of interest to me, but a lot of coaches since I've done certification since 07, 08, coaches transitioning out of in-person coaching, running a brick and mortar gym, taking their expertise to online, which Matt is an expert of because he was a gym owner. Um, now, obviously, a business owner with Barbell Logic, which I have used, as I said, in the past. And uh, just a real savvy, you're a very smart, dialed in, not just strength coach, fitness coach. I hate to say it, Matt, a little bit of a life coach, <laughs> yeah. accidental but, life yeah, coach. Just a business guy, I think. Yep. You know, it's it's as you move through your career, you tackle new challenges. You know, and for me, I think in my early days, I've I've told this story before, where I was just a painfully average athlete in high school, but I had a super competitive streak, and so I needed to find something to compete at. And that's actually where I first discovered you it was in the old, you know, the old elite FTS articles and stuff that you'd write. And so I got into powerlifting and strongman because that was the challenge at that time, you know, and this is like in the late nineties, early two thousands. And, uh, so I competed in powerlifting and, and total elite at four different, in four different weight classes in powerlifting and then turned to strongman and started competing in strongman and won my pro card actually at the same show that Brian Shaw won his, we were the two pros. There were two new pros back in those days, two new American pros every year. And in, in 06, it was, it was me and Shaw. And so Shaw has done, gone on to, to do great things in the strongman world. And, and I moved more in the business world. And so, um, yeah, man, in, in 2008, I opened a gym, strong gym that grew to be one of the largest, uh, privately owned strength gyms in the country. Uh, I, at the time I was a teacher. And so obviously we have a lot in common. I, I was the head strength coach at a five, a high school in Missouri, which is the I biggest, remember. that's the biggest, um, classification in Missouri. So I know some states have six A and seven A and whatnot. Missouri is five A is as big as you get. So it's pretty good, pretty good size high school. Did that for 10 years. Um while I was a pro strongman and competing as a pro strongman and, and running the gym and and uh finished my master's to be a high school principal and thought that was the direction I was going to go. And honestly by the time I got through my master's I was like I don't know that I'm going to stay in the public school industry for for the rest of my life for the next 30 or 35 years or whatever. And so uh so I left in 2012 to run the gym full time. And then I sold the gym in 2015 and started the online coaching business with Barbell Logic in early 2016. So we're eight years in now. Um, and man, that that business has just grown tremendously. You know, we've got a staff of about a hundred. We're we're a forty million dollar business. It's Holy. crazy. Um, and so and so I'd love to have a conversation. You know, I hit you up and I said, Man, I'd love to have a conversation about why I think online coaching may actually be better than in-person coaching. And, and that's probably a little bit clickbaity because I think in-person coaching is still great. I think that if you've got a great coach and you've got a great atmosphere and you've got a great gym, I mean, I, I think those things are awesome. But what I'm seeing with a lot of these coaches out there is that they, they feel like prisoners to the location and the schedule. They can't leave. They can't take vacation. They can't, if they do, they don't get paid. Uh, or or the clients, a lot of times the clients, you know, that the cost of personal training is expensive. And so the type of clients you have for personal training, they often take vacation or they often go on trips or maybe they're business executives and they're in hotel gyms two or three times a week. And then they train at their house or their or a local gym the other half of the week. And so and so we just started to see we had always said early on, we, we weren't trying to say that online coaching was better than in person coaching. We felt like if again, if you had a great coach and a great atmosphere and all those things, and I, I still want to dive into some of those, that that online coaching was the next best option. But after doing this for eight years, I, I would at least like to have the conversation that I think that online coaching may be better than in person coaching, at least for a lot of people out there, not for everybody. And the last thing I want to do is come on the show and say, I think you should give up your in-person coaching practice. But if you're one of those coaches that are listening and you're people like, might celebrate, <laughs> they might, they might, uh, and, and some probably need to, yes. um, but if you're, if you're a burned out gym owner, you've done this for 10 years, 
you're like, I can't scale the business. Like I've got plenty of clients, but I can't scale and make more money unless I just take on more clients and work more hours. And so I'm working 40 hours a week or 50 hours a week or six, you know, you're, you're a Jersey boy. That's like the culture there is like blue collar, hard work. I'm a Midwestern guy. It's the same thing. It's, you know, probably a little more farm oriented, but like people, just, you know, it's, it's dark people that are watching this, like it's six in the morning here. Uh, this is the best work of the day I get. I've been up since four. I love to do that work. And, um, and that, that's, so it's deep, deeply ingrained in my culture to work hard, but I, I don't think working hard necessarily has to be at odds with working effectively or efficiently or being able to figure out a way to drive up your dollar per hour. And so I think that's, that's the conversation I love to have and just kind of talk through that. I don't have any thing to sell to your clients. We'll talk about how we did that at Barbell Logic or to your listeners. Um, I, I don't, for me, we want to put out all the free content we can to tr because we have billion people in the world and seven and a half billion of them need to get stronger. Maybe all eight billion <laughs> need to get stronger. Oh yeah. And so we're not competing for, <laughs> I, I want to make more good coaches help reach more people. That's it. That's all there is to it. And there, there is an, there are far more than enough people for, to go around all. And what really is the bottleneck are good coaches. It's not a lot of good coaches. And so if the good coaches we can convince to move like, Hey, you've got 12 or 15 or 20 clients in person and you can move to a hybrid model maybe not even get out of the in-person model, but you could add another 30 or 40 clients and make a hundred thousand dollars more per year, which is not, it sounds almost like a multi-level marketing scheme, like a, like a Mary Kay pitch, you know, like you can get the pink, the pink Cadillac, you know, but it's the reality is, is that Almost all of our coaches do that at Barbell Logic. They they own gyms, they train in person, <clears throat> but they also have a large online coaching group and they're making, you know, 75, 85, 105 thousand dollars a year working an hour a day, hour and a half a day online coaching. And like that to me is how you scale your business and be able to reach more people, you know, beyond just your local town. And I, I think that, you know, for both the clients, it gives them the opportunity to connect with some of the best coaches in the world, regardless of where the coaches are. And for the really great coaches in the world, that helps them connect with everybody all over the world, as opposed to their local town and people that live within 15 or 20 minutes of their gym. So, yeah. Um, and you know what, when you did the uh, intro, uh, a little background is, you know, I came across Matt in the early days of the Barbell Shrug podcast. Yeah. I hear, I hear the podcast of this guy who was a teacher grows this massive gym, sells it. And I forgot that you were a high school strength coach as well, which mm -hmm. was, you know, um, not a really a common job, so to speak back in the day. And uh, also Matt, what's interesting is the changes of the times. So you and I kind of coming up in the business and the industry around the same time, you know, the only people who had a garage gym or a basement gym were kind of the early CrossFit era people. Yep, Otherwise, sure. everybody was going to a gym. And then um, you and I, uh, you know, like I said to people, I had you do consulting with me on my gym. At the time, I had multiple locations. Then um, I had my knee and shoulder problem, and I was very limited. And so I did online training with you for six months. And then years later, COVID happened. And it's so interesting, you know, just listening to you, I'm thinking to myself, oh, Matt didn't know it, but you were always a step ahead of what was actually happening in the yeah. world. Because once COVID hit, that shook up the gym, like the global gym industry. And now look at, uh, look at what people are doing in their garage gym. It's like a yeah. massive, it's a massive business for companies like Rogue and Rep and Sorenex who are yep. helping people outfit a single car garage, but it's like a $30,000 investment. Yeah. So really, yeah, sure. it, I um, let's, you know, let's talk about somebody like me. There's a lot of listeners like myself who either are strength coaches in the college sector or they own a private facility or... Um, what I've noticed is like, especially my first certification, the underground strength coach certification, a lot of the guys who went through that certification, they closed down their gyms, they left coaching, they left it, but they were actually very good coaches. How yeah. could somebody who is thinking of getting out or did get out 
has a quote unquote normal job, how would they start doing the online coaching? Where yeah. would you start? Well, I think one of the advantages of online coaching as opposed to in-person coaching in that scenario. So COVID happens and, and, you know, by the way, we, we were, we were the largest client of the largest programming software that was out there. Um, I have nothing bad to say about those guys. They were great to work with, but we recognize the limitations in that other third party pro and not just that one, but all of the ones we, the first thing for us is we wanted to auto collect PRs metrics, all the PRs, not one rep max PRs, but like if you set a three set of eight or three sets of 10 barbell curl PR, we wanted it to auto track that. Cause it's the kind of stuff that you don't really track as a coach, right? You're, you're tracking your clients, one rep max, and maybe their three rep max and their five rep max on a handful of exercises, but it's just, it's impossible to, to really, to track all of those metrics. And so we started to develop our own software about four years ago with no intention of taking that to the industry with just, it was just going to be a proprietary software for Barbell Logic. And then we, we got that figured out and we felt like it was significantly better than anything else out there. We transitioned our coaches over, uh, had lots of stress about what's called change management, right? People, when stuff changes, people freak out and they're like, it's different and I don't like it. And it actually went really smooth for both the, for both the clients and the coaches. Um, it was a similar, it worked similar to the other, third-party programming softwares and stuff that was out there, but there was a real focus on actual coaching. And one of the things that you and I have talked about before is I, I am not a fan of what the world considers online coaching, which is really just selling programs. And I, and I, you know, I've, I've never done that. I've, I've certainly done programs, but even in the old days and where technology was a mess, uh, you know, clients would video their lifts and they would upload them to YouTube and make them private and then send me the link on email. It was very clunky. And then we moved to a forum and then we moved to this third party software and then we developed our own software and then COVID hits and every gym in the world closes down. And we started to realize like we've got this system where our coaches are making, you know, $250, $300 per hour on average, like crazy money per hour. It also costs the client about a third of what personal training costs. So, you know, personal training is 500, 600, 800, depending on where you live, dollars a month. And online coaching is often like in the $200 range. So it's cheaper for the client. But then the coach isn't, you, you know, when you train clients, most of your time is actually spent between the lifts in the rest periods. And you're talking and you're building relationships and whatnot, which is all still good things. But your hour is given to that client for that hour. And you guys both have to be at the same location and you have to be on the same schedule and all that stuff. And so the advantage I think of online coaching for someone who's maybe moved out of that space and are, they went back to being an accountant or an engineer or whatever they do is that they can start to add an online coaching to their, to their repertoire and to their, to their work. And they can do it as little as they want. Online coaching, if done well, is extremely efficient. And so you can still work an eight to five job and work an extra hour a day before work, after work, whenever you want to do it. And that's the flexibility of online coaching. And you can make quite a bit more money. And at some point, I think you can actually get to the point that you can build up a clientele base that you could actually step away. If you hate your job, if, you, if you're back in this post-COVID world and you wake up every morning, the alarm goes off. I remember this in my public school teaching days. I, I enjoyed teaching kids, but I hated the hoops and the politics and the stuff. And I can remember the alarm going off and just being like, I would shout every curse word. On, I think you know, on people the hate their jobs, Matt. They're like, yeah, they hate we, their jobs. That's the truth. People want, listen, I say it all the time. I love the flexibility and the freedom when I was certainly a full-blooded entrepreneur. Like, hey, I'm going to work in the morning, then I'm going to train, then I'm going to do some work, but I'm going to take that work to this coffee shop today. That's right. There's a lot of beauty behind that. I know what you love to do is you love to wake up very early. Have a pot of coffee. You love to do that. And uh, that's something as a dad, actually, that I want my kids to understand. Um, but, you know, I see like, uh, you know, my daughter, I think, would work for a place. Whereas my son, you know what he's starting to say? I don't want to be part of the Matrix. I'm like, oh, he's watched too many. Uh, what, what's that's that right. guy? Andrew he's been, red, he's been red pilled. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's that's saying. Right. <laughs> he said that, you know, we did college visits with my daughter and took him. And he's like, yeah, he's like, I don't need the red pill. And mm -hmm. But what's uh, interesting is what, what's hitting home to me is I know a lot of guys when they were coming to my certification in the early days, Matt, they were trying to escape that job they hated. That's right. Then 
They didn't really have the business know-how. The, the name of the software is also Barbell Logic. No, it's actually Turnkey Coach, and that's really turnkey I think coach. important again. And I, I told you it's the the goal here is not to have a commercial for that. But one no, of no, the things okay. that we saw is that we know that you've got a lot of great coaches out there, good coaches, great coaches. They're great at coaching, but they don't understand business very well. And they don't really want to, and they want to do what they do best, which is coach. And so we had developed over eight years, as you know, like I'm a super systems and standard operating procedure. We're a high organization company. You know, we've spent a lot of time making sure that, and, and a lot of that, it necessitates that because I live in Springfield, Missouri in the Ozarks, but my staff is everywhere. So we're not all checking into a headquarters, punching the time clock. We don't clock people's hours. And so we had to be a company that was based on output. How much work could they get done? I don't care if it takes them 15 hours or 50 hours or whatever. It's like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be big brother looking over your shoulder, or clocking your hours. I just, there's an, a level of output that we have to do. And because of that, we developed really good systems and standard operating procedures for all of the business stuff, right? The payment processing, the customer service, if a client bounces a credit card. And of course, there's multiple reasons for that. Like it's insufficient funds or the credit card expired or the, there was a security issue on the credit card and they had to get a new one in. And so what we do with Turnkey Coach is it's a, it's a fully immersive programming software and complete coaching platform where we do all the back-end business work for the coach, all the customer service, all the payment processing you talked about before, I think before we started recording that, you know, issues with Stripe and like all of a sudden that gets disconnected and you're like, you don't have to worry about that with us. Like it's everything pain, is set up. A, and that's a coach, a coach. This is a lot of coaches. That's why they go to work in the college setting because they want to be on the weight room floor. That's Whereas right. Dan Kennedy said, once you become the business owner, it becomes more about the marketing of the thing and not the doing of the thing. But yeah. a lot of coaches, they love training so much. They want nothing to do with business. So it's interesting to um, hear how you, um, you know, a real great business solves problems. That's right. Which is what, yeah, you're, so, what you're doing. Uh, you know, I, I, one of my favorite business books of all time is the E-Myth. And coaches, I think, ultimately want to be a technician in their, in their job. They want to be the the professional tech. They want to coach. They just want to coach people. They don't want to manage. They don't want to be the owner. And that's what the myth kind of lays out. In any business, there are owners, managers, and technicians. And in the beginning, you're all three if you're going to do this well. And you've got to learn to have enough time to work on the business, not just in the business, right? This is a common thing that we hear from business guys. But a lot of coaches really just want to work in the business. They want to coach. But what they don't want to do is coach 70 hours a week. They don't want to not be able to take a vacation with their family. If they take a vacation, they don't get paid. And so one of the things that we started to see was, look, if we can talk to these in-person coaches, one, uh, as, as one piece of the demographic who are maybe burned out, they're coaching a ton, they're in, they're in the gym, and help them transition to a hybrid model, not to like completely turn in the keys to the gym, but maybe move the gym to like a 24 hour, um, you know, clock or 20, 24 hour check in keypad. They're there with normal office hours and they coach in person, but then they tell their clients and they sign up, look, a couple times a year, I'm going to go on vacation. I'm going to Mexico with my family and I'm going to continue to program for you on this software. And then I'm going to break down your videos via our, our software has a built in screen recorder so that you actually screen record yourself picture in picture. The client sees themselves squatting. They hear your feedback on their squats. They see your face. They see your movements. You know, you, you take your arm, you're like, ah, oh, you got to bend over a little bit more on the squat here. You're forward on your toes. You can draw on the stuff. All that stuff was built in. So what we really did is we started with how do we automate metrics and make that, that alone was going to be better than all the other third-party softwares. And then, man, my dev team and my, my um, COO and, pro and, and product manager, he is incredible. He comes from a lean manufacturing background. And we started looking at like, how do we do this in the most efficient way possible? How do we make it so that coaching is extremely efficient for the coach? with no loss in service for the client. And that is a massive core value for us. We don't want to make it efficient for efficiency's sake and just make the coach a bunch of money per hour and not provide excellent service to the client because the client will leave. But now after eight years of doing this, dude, our, our churn rate is like 2.5 to 3%. It's always under 3%. That is, that's unheard of low in any industry, let alone the fitness industry. We don't have contracts. 
So when I say 3%, we lose 3% of our clients per month. And you're talking about thousands of clients. And there's just a handful that leave. And so now if you do that well, you don't have to focus on replacing 200 clients for us every month, right? It's like, ah, if we replace 25 clients, then we continue to grow. If if we were, if we add 50, we literally grow because we've replaced everyone that left. And so, and so that was a big piece of it. How could we provide the best customer service to our clients first, just for Barbell Logic? And then how could we make this system available to other people who are trying to move that direction? So I think one, you've got the burned out coach who's still coaching in the gym, probably, you know, still has PTSD from COVID because they did what they could to try to get through COVID. And now like the world's kind of opened back up and they're like, dude, I can't ever leave. I'm working 60 hours a week. The only way to make more money is to work 70 hours a week. And you're like, listen, there is a better way. You can work 20 hours a week, 25 hours a week in the gym and transition a lot of your clients to either an online or a hybrid model. So you coach them in person some and online some, and they either go and train at your gym if they live close. But we've also talked to a lot of the coaches. They've got people who are driving an hour into their gym because that's the best gym to train at. And those people can train in their garage gym. Just like you said, that garage gym explosion has occurred. You know, garage gym reviews. It's a, I don't know if you know this, but Coop oh, is actually in my town in Springfield. Oh, so that's he's right. Yeah, yes. it's actually headquartered here. Okay. Um, you know, we've had great relationships with them. And of course, I, I still have a lot of I'm grateful to CrossFit as much as I'm not a fan of CrossFit because it exposed people to barbell based training, home gyms, garage gyms. Like you don't have to go to the big box Globo gym and train. And so what we have is we've got a bunch of clients at Barbell Logic who are business executives and soccer moms and dads who have great little garage gyms or basement gyms or, you know, guest bedroom gyms. And they train in those several times a week. They travel and they're in hotel gyms a couple of times a week. Yes. And like, look, you can't do squats and deadlifts in a hotel gym, but we can still maintain consistency and still get a good workout in dumbbells, body weight, Bulgarian split squats, goblet squats, you know, things like that. You can do those things. All of that can come through on a programming software. And then you can video yourself and your coach can break that down. And by the way, we can connect you with a coach. It's perfect for you that it's hard to find a coach is perfect for you in your little town. I, again, I'm speaking in Springfield, Missouri, but think about there's hundreds, there, there's a hundred million people in the United States that live in very rural areas. There are no coaches. There aren't even bad coaches. There are none, none. And so the internet has created this opportunity to be able to, to, to help clients reach expert coaches and help expert coaches expand their potential clientele to the entire world and not just the US. I mean, you know, we've got We've got some international coaches. We have a ton of international clients. We have a ton. Of, we're 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 coaching so, soldiers now. Oh, I lost my monitor. Sorry. Uh, we are uh, we're coaching soldiers now. We got Air Force contract. Uh, I saw yeah, that. Yes. Yeah, these guys. I mean, they're training in Tunisia and Algeria, and there's no. But you know, these these soldiers are often they they are very itinerant. You know, they're in San Diego for for two years, and then they're in Germany for two years, and then Afghanistan for three years, and like. As long as as they can get good quality online coaching, they can do that anywhere in the world. And so whether that's the business executive that travels to the hotel or the soldier that's all over the place or just the client at your gym who is traveling to the gym numerous times per week and it's hard to connect on the schedule and the location of your coach, you can still, you know, you can do that on Saturday mornings and still coach your clients in person and then online coach them through the week and they can coach, they can train out of their, out of their home gyms and it works yeah. great. Let me ask you a question, Matt. Cause I remember seeing you post about the uh, air force, I guess, was that a government contract? Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, let's so talk we got about, that in January. Yep. I want to talk about kind of two sides to it and uh, to make it uh, make sense for the people listening. How does somebody acquire their first individual online client? And then how do they uh, like move towards I'm tr I'm programming for a team or a, uh, you know, yeah. you're training um, a, I don't know, like what we call the Air Force, a government organization. Yeah. Business, so, business to business, basically <clears throat> going from individual to business or group. Yeah. If you were to give asking. like a two to three minute rundown sure. of uh, business advices, as Arnold says. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think first off in the online coaching, obviously online coaching is a saturated market, but it's also full of, and I think you're, you're 
listeners understand this because I don't think this is who they are. It's it's rife with Instagram models who yes. they're selling, you know, taking pictures of their butts or abs and posting it on Instagram. And so they're selling you know, big booty blaster, whatever. That's the thing. Well, that's not really online coaching. And that person's not even really a coach. You know, there's somebody who's probably taking Ozempic and performance <laughs> enhancing drugs and and also just have great genetics and whatever. And so everybody looks at them as like, <clears throat> oh, I'll pay them for a for a cookie cutter template. Well, that's not online coaching, right? And so for us as experts in the field, I think the first thing you have to do is just make content. Like content is king. We're a service business. We make money on service, which means that content is free. And you've done this for years. Again, like that's how I know who you are is from reading articles back in the day that you posted in various places online. And so I think that making those high value content, listen, they don't have to be, if you look at Barbell Logic, one of the things I I get a little nervous about people look at is like, we have highly produced everything. The podcast is highly produced. The videos are highly produced. We did it backwards. We, I got lucky, man. We monetized the company, made money, and then we're able to back in that and start to really make content and put out content consistently. And we've done that since 2017. But for most people like, dude, an iPhone works great. iPhone and one of those road you know, microphones that cost a hundred bucks on, on Amazon. Like the, th the problem with an iPhone is the audio sucks. <laughs> so you can get great quality video, great quality audio. You post, you post high value content, not highly produced content. You produce high value content and you do that very consistently. And this is actually really tough. I think for people to do, I see coaches do this all the time. They fire out of the cannon. They burn the candle at both ends. They put out a ton of content. I see the content. I'm like, this is great, high value content. And six months <clears> later, <throat> they burn out because they can't continue to put out that content. Like you've got to keep writing the articles or making the podcasts or doing the videos. I don't or know the, if people know. read articles like they once did. Like um, I don't think they do. Yeah, yeah it's more um, video. Now it's you know YouTube Shorts, yeah, um, and of course Instagram. But I think the key is when you know people will be like, hey, "What's high value?" I came across something yesterday. Um, I don't remember where, maybe on Twitter, and it said, um, "Market to me your business," and I think you're selling me something. Market to me the answer to my problems, and I think you're trying to help me. And okay. so that was a reminder to me of um you know anytime i have an injury and it's been a while but let's say my shoulder my knee you start going down the rabbit hole yep. looking for a solution or when covid happened gym owners were looking for cleaning solutions and that was kind of like you know yep. that was an easy an easy sell but then um all kinds of businesses started opening up and revolving around cleaning products so I think even sometimes I get away from that. Like I create content. So like my recent video was about like living in the squat rack. That's not really solving somebody's problem. Sure. Um, but so, so I had to that seeing that um, Twitter post or X post yesterday, that was a reminder of like, what is the problem you're solving? What have you found is the problem you're solving? Because I think it's a lot of adults in the, 40 plus range yeah. correct yeah i think for <clears throat> us are again and i don't think this needs to be everybody's um mo but for barbell logic we we try to we try to help people experience strength to improve their quality of life period and for people who are 35 to 65 that's what they're looking to do they're they're they typically be they're typically more of a high income certainly from a you know age bracket demographic they stay, they are good at, they, they actually take uh, direction and are able to be coached. They don't push back and fight. They don't, they don't get tired of it after six months and move on to the hot yoga or CrossFit. And so it's a great demographic for us to reach. And so if you look at our content, our content is all focused on that, that thing. Like how do we improve quality of life? And that might be, that could be from how to videos. I don't know how to, <clears throat> how to use wrist straps. I don't know how to do an RDL. I don't, so there's, we have a ton, you know, hundreds of those, right? But also training in a way that, so that you can be, uh, you know, a, one of our podcast series right now is called Beast Over Burden. Like training shouldn't be a burden. If you hate it, it's unsustainable, you know? And again, I've talked about this a lot. I have a lot of respect for guys like Jocko and it's kind of discipline over motivation. But I really think that if we pull back, there is some combination of discipline, plus motivation oh, yeah. plus joy <clears throat> equals this is this is sustainable 
We Absolutely. know that when we white knuckle discipline something, often that's how we have to start, right? When you t- we, to turn the to turn the momentum, you've got momentum of being sedentary or you're eating crap and you're door dashing all day. Like at some point, you just have to take the initiative to be disciplined enough to get up early in the morning and not do the door dash and like whatever the thing is that you're trying to change. But if, if you if it's a good thing, and I, I don't really want to assign morality to it, but if it if it's a thing that is good for you. And will help bring you joy. What I found is that motivation almost always follows that discipline. After a while, you're like, now I'm motivated to get up at five in the morning. Now I'm motivated to make my food at home and not DoorDash. Now I'm not, <coughs> if, if, if six weeks in, you still hate making food at home and you'd rather DoorDash, like it's not going to last. And so at some point there's actually, I think it starts with discipline the purpose of the thing is to bring you joy or improve your quality of life. And what you almost always find is that then the motivation will follow. And once the motivation follows, it turns into habit. Now you have a habit, right? And so yes. there, there is a continuation <clears throat> piece there that occurs. And so I think that's a big piece. So for us, it's about creating that value for our clients. And then, and then we've seen over the eight years of being a business, we man, we saw, we've seen a ton of our clients who had their lives changed for the better for strength. And then they want to, help their spouses, t- train their spouses, train their kids, train their neighbors, the people they go to church with, whatever. So we had to figure out like, well, how do we bring value to those people? And so we developed an academy to start teaching like up and coming young, you know, people who don't have exercise science degrees or business professionals and other fields. You know, they tend to be intelligent people and they understand. And so we've focused on an online learning environment there with the academy where we help teach people and we give them permission basically to coach like, hey, you can start coaching. You already know more than the 18 year old kid at Planet Fitness. So yep. you can you can start coaching your wife or coach your kids. And you know, I know there's a lot of pushback there about it's hard to coach your spouse. And it is hard to coach your spouse. But I think that coaching your friends and family is the first place we start. So we started trying to make content with value there. And then it has become for us as we've moved further down the business, is like, okay, now let's give people the tools to actually do that. And that's what turnkey coach is. It's the tools to actually coach without having to worry about setting up the LLC, getting all the business stuff figured out, payment processing through Stripe, which by the way, you know, we've used Stripe for eight years. We've run tens and tens of millions of dollars through there. So we have a great relationship with Stripe. So you get to set up your own Stripe account under our account. Like we don't touch your money. We don't see your money, but because we have such a great relationship with Stripe, you can get a Stripe account for far less paperwork and far less, you know, you don't have to prove... We're basically saying, like, look, we if for some reason this person, you know, stiff somebody, we'll we'll cover it. And so, like, we we're careful. And then Stripe's like, all right, because you guys have done this for eight years, it's called Stripe Connect. And so you get your own Connect Stripe account. You charge your clients. That money goes directly into your account, not ours. We don't see the money. We don't make interest off your money or anything like that. Auto deposits in the account. <clears throat> and so we try to give people the tools. Again, we do the customer service. We send people birthday cards and anniversary cards and you know if somebody has a baby or somebody loses their mom we send a you know we we send a card to them like that kind of stuff that's the stuff that we do so that you can do what you do best which is coach and so all of that comes back to the content that we've made from the very beginning and really what barbell logic was based on in the beginning was this podcast that walked people through this systematic logical progression of strength and so we started with the simplest of questions like why strength like there's all this stuff you could do. You could be strong, you could be agile, you could have endurance, balance, you know, all this stuff that CrossFit kind of talks about those 10 big things. And we're like, here's why we focus on strength first, not strength only, not strength at all costs. We're not really gallon of milk a day sort of people. You know, again, it's like if you're a 155 pound kid, maybe, but for the most part, it's like, that's not who our demographic is. And so here's why we focus on strength. Here are the exercises that get me strong. Here are how to perform those exercises. Here's the programming that gets me strong. It's very simple, simple, hard, effective. You know, people like hardship. People love well. It works. People also sometimes love, and this is the other piece of this: is I think our demographic loves simple. Yes, but I think 22 year olds love complicated. You're right. I think it's seductive, man. I think complexity is like seductive to them. They're like, I want to train like an advanced athlete, and you're like, bro, if you could add five pounds to the bar every day for the next six months. Why would you do anything different? So when people first sign up for us, it's like, listen, you're not paying for complicated programming. You're paying for the technique coaching, which is why I think often online coaching must contain technique coaching and not just be a program. 
you're going to, you're going to buy a program for me. That's a simple linear progression. Like, dude, you can figure it out in four workouts. Right. And so I think that's who we are. Um, yeah. What you said about the younger coaches or younger people. And, um, it, that's, uh, a uh man i don't even know how to phrase this but that's still an issue in that's a major issue in the strength and conditioning world you know where a sport coach will say to me hey um i saw you know uh texas does these yeah. speed workouts before their football game and it's like yeah but here's our problem we have kids that can't do one pull up we that's have right. kids that don't show up so we're not we need to not worry about what college guys are doing and by the way, you who know, are the freakiest of the freaks? Yeah, only six or seven percent of our kids are going to play in college, and That's then fifty percent right. of them will not make it through their first season. So you and I, being a quote unquote being around the block, like right now, my online uh, clients, I do a VIP coaching program. Um, it's basically, oh, it's like five hundred dollars a month, but I don't use software, so this is a great conversation for me to have with you selfishly because it's a little bit like it's not as smooth as I want it to be but their VIP access to me is you could text me and video yep. message me your stuff but how do you scale that you really can't yep. you know yep. you can, I could get to a certain number before it it explodes and so um what we didn't touch on uh, I don't want to jump the gun we didn't touch on like you Moving know into the the larger group yeah, so, so, online yes. coaching. So I think that what you do is you start with the one-on-one -on -one because the one-on-one -on -one coaching, and I, and I mean online, right? So certainly in person as well, but like online is a place where you get your flow figured out, right? You get yes. the systems figured out. You get your programming figured out. You learn how to get efficient as a coach. Again, people, when they start on Turnkey Coach, and it, so we were making on average about $50 an hour on the other <clears throat> you know, true coach and train heroic and all these, you know, you've got, you've got ones like, and I think people should look at those, but for us, once we, once we develop that, that, uh, system of auto collecting metrics, which one saves the coach clients or saves the, the coach time because they don't have to auto collect those things. And by the way, it gives you a little dopamine hit for the client. Every time the client hits a PR, they're like, Oh, you just hit a chin up PR. And you might've not known that. Right. So that's, that's important. You develop this system and a flow state of how to coach your one-on-one -on -one clients. And you develop those systems, and you develop those standard operating procedures, and you get more efficient, and you watch your dollar per hour go from like $100 per hour to $300 per hour. And then you're ready to take the step into trying to coach teams or businesses, HR groups, government, because Man. now you know how to do that at scale. You can't do this if you only have three clients. There's no What's... way to go from three online coaching clients to try to sell you know, a, a big business. I'm going to go to Sony. And I'm going to talk to their HR department and we want to do the health and wellness for Sony. Like, well, who are you? Well, like I have three coaching clients. It's, it's, one, you couldn't do it. It would kill you because you can't take on 2000 clients. And I, I don't know how many businesses are out there that could do that anyway. Now, could you take on a field hockey team or, you know, a football team or a softball team that's got 25, maybe, but I think you start simple one at a time. You figure out that system, you figure out that flow. So to put it in perspective, I have 40 online coaching clients right now. And I've actually increased what I what I have. And remember, I'm a CEO of a $40 million business. Most of my time is spent doing that. But I think it's important that I continue to coach all my C-suite still coaches, right? Like all my all the upper executives, they're coaches. And that's important because one, I want to keep my coaching eyes sharp. Two, I want to have access and I want to see what's going <clears> on <throat> in the software. Not only am I a coach on the software, I'm a client on the software. I use it from the client side on my phone. So I use the software on my computer as a coach. And then I use it on my phone as a client. I go in and train, track my workouts and upload my videos to my coach. And I get to see all of those things. 40 clients I have, I would make about $95,000 a year if I were a 1099 coach at Barbell Logic. Takes me about 50 minutes to 60 minutes a day. Well, let me So uh, that's 95,000 to hold on $95,000 a year to yeah. work an hour a day. And by the way, that's not I want to be clear. That is not me selling Barbell Logic. That is actually well, at Barbell Logic, we take more money from our clients than we would take from people who figure out how to do this on their own and pay out less, right? And so there's With a people huge... hearing that you're going to get people <laughs> reaching out right. to you. So I'll make sure also um, in the audio and the video, there's going to be links 
to uh, Barbell Logic and Turnkey Coach where they could. Sure. And you tell me what links to put in there. Yeah, for sure. Um, you were mentioning, I, I just back up like one minute yep. on that. I'm taking notes here. You were mentioning just some standard operating procedures for like your first few online clients. And by the way, yep. when you said um, start training kind of family members or people you know, that's the advice I'm giving to coaches when they're like, Hey, you know, I've got this knowledge and I'm going to open this gym, but I don't have clients. Yep. I'm like, no, 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 yep. yeah, chill yeah. out. Why don't you start training uh, family members or you have some friends who have, you know, you know, two or three kids that are in middle school sports, train them out of yep. a garage and then prove to me that you could get 20 people to That's train right. out of your garage. Then we could talk about renting space and all that stuff. Because so because it's low <clears throat> risk, high reward for those people, right? It's yeah. low risk for you. You're not going to get some business loan at the bank. And I don't know that I would, I think you should ever do that. But like oh, you just- A lot of people do that. I oh, I never, know. And then- Have you ever taken a loan out, Matt, for any of this? Uh, no, I mean, we've got a business line of credit at this point, but now we have investors at this point. So we've, we've raised about $6 million over the course of the life of the business. And so, and again, part of that for us is that our business is wired a little different. It's not based on the cult of personality of me. You know this. I've always tried to build a business to have a lot of value for the business itself. The business is built on the quality of service and the quality of coaching that our coaches provide. And so I'm never going to be like an Alex Hormozzi guy who I love. Like I love watching Hormozzi stuff. The dude's right. great. But the problem is, is that if Barbell Logic is based on Matt Reynolds' cult of personality and I die in a car accident, the, the business is worth nothing. Or if I just want to sell the business a few years down the road, they're like, well, you got to stay because you're the face of the business. I don't want to be the face of the business. I want your business to be based on the quality of the coaching. You told me this long ago. And what's interesting is like if I sold the underground strength gym, um, all those kids would stay because I only go there once a week. So yep. if the person wanted to buy the business, I would say my coaches keep the coaches on board. That's and right. That's what's going to get, you know. And typically that's part of a sell, you know, part of the, part of the negotiation factor. It's like, look, we're, your employees are going to sign a contract that says, and a lot of times those employees, again, as a company gets big, like ours does, our employees have stock options and whatnot. So, okay. In order to cash out their stock, if they're going to cash out their stock, they're going to sign up a contract that says they're going to stay for the next year and coach for a year. And then they can make a decision moving forward if they, you know, and, and often it would be the same thing. They would keep me on as CEO for some period of time to train up a new CEO. So that, that's right. kind of like what happens as the business gets big, but it's, you know, that, that systems and not standard operating procedures for these, for these coaches is just about figuring out where there are places where you are distracted and you're not getting efficient work done. And so, you know, as a, as a coach, one, we want to be extremely efficacious, which I realize is a big word, but like we want to be able to move people towards the goal. Right. If some client comes to you and says, I want to lose weight or I want to get stronger, I want to do you better be able to do that. Right. If some client comes to us and we have a lot of clients like this, I want to lose weight. I want to lose inches off my waist. I want my health metrics to go to get better. I want my blood pressure to go down. You know, all that. And of course, we can't guarantee that we, you know, you know, all this stuff. But and we just focus on making their squat stronger. We missed the boat. It's not it's not efficacious, right? And so so with the clients, we realize that the the real value in building these systems is that you're building trust and relationship with your clients via one, they trust that you have the ability and you actually do have the ability to do what you can that you can move them towards the goal <clears throat> as an expert coach, as a quality coach. Two, you have the integrity to do what you say you're going to do. So will you continue to provide programming at the right time? Give them feedback. We provide feedback within 24 hours every single time. Video feedback, like that kind of stuff. It's the kind of stuff that separates you in the in the field. And then three, can you provide some level of authentic, I wish there was a better word for this. We, we call it benevolence. Like do, the, do your clients know you actually care about them? Oh if yeah. You, if you can show that you have the ability, you can, the integrity you will and the benevolence you care, they will build trust with you and your relationship will build even in the online sphere, which I think is much harder to do than an in-person coach. Now, the one thing I, would, I do want to be clear, the one drawback, the biggest drawback of online coaching versus in-person is the lack of atmosphere. If you've got a great gym, underground strength gym is this great gym of atmosphere 
Yeah. Lots of people need that and they want to go to that. Right. And so that's where I think a hybrid model can often work well. But I actually think that you can build a lot. If you do it well, you can build an excellent relationship and build trust with your clients. And then the other thing we saw with online coaching <clears throat> as a, my best in-person clients when I owned Strong Gym still missed a lot because they travel. They go on a cruise. They go on vacation. They're business guys that go, you know, and they're in hotels and they didn't train during those times. With online coaching, they can train during all those times, right? They can train think, on vacation. Um... They can train. That's so it works. In your mid thirty, once you get to maybe your mid thirties, maybe I'm wrong, but you know, I think, uh, let's see, my daughter's seventeen, I'm almost forty eight, so she was, I was like thirty one. Once you get that busy family life going, I don't really give a shit to go to another gym. Um, I'm, I would love my own home gym, and I think COVID times helped raise the value of what yep. the value that people get from online. Uh, interaction, whether it's coaching or not, like anything, meaning uh, they got so used to being on Zoom yep. that, you know, companies in New York City stopped sending, you know, thousands and tens of thousands of employees to the city because they realized, hey, we're actually getting more work done. You know, yep. John Smith and Susie Smith are not on the train an hour each way That's right. um, commuting. They're they're getting work done. You know, but then, you know, my buddy Joe DeSena said, listen, when you're in the office with people, nobody's going to do their laundry and taking their, you know, kid to That's the right. dentist. But I think for your target market, and I honestly think that's the better target. I don't want to target people in their 20s. When I'm online coaching, it's all adults. Um, yeah. one and, and by the way, the, the clients that you yeah. coach that are kids, who is actually your client? I was just going to say this. A father reached out to me Their to parents. train his son That's right. um, after ACL repair. So right. it's I'm not communicating directly with the son, the, the father. Kid. And how he's do the they, one that puts the credit card on file, right? Well, how, how do they reach out to me? Let's what did Matt say earlier? Content, whether it's the yep. podcast, the videos. Um, and it's interesting. I've said this a lot, but you never know who's listening when they're listening. It takes time for people to build trust in you, or it takes a specific moment, a painful moment in their life to come across one of your key pieces That's of exactly content right. where they're like, oh, now I need this guy. Like, for example, uh, Donnie Thompson puts out, or he used to do on YouTube, a lot of videos for shoulder health, hips, yep. back, and I'm always sharing those videos with my coaches, but I know like, where did I come across that stuff? Well, I had started having shoulder problems. Jacked up shoulder, jacked up back, jacked up knee, right? That's so what you do. You go down the rabbit hole that addresses people's pain. So um, it, by the way, it comes back to what we started talking about with the content. Like again, when people, when people hire you as a coach, think of how many, few, we've done this for three decades about at this point, you and me, yes. right? How many people hire you when they're in a great place? Almost none. There's right? got to be. I've heard it for decades. Listen, yeah. dads will call me and be like, I can't stand watch. I can't sit in the stands anymore and watch my son sit the bench. Or I can't be in the stands anymore. And my daughter doesn't get enough playing time. She's too right. slow. Or every time my son loses, there's a kid wearing an underground strength shirt. Like, what right. The, you know, or, or, the, or their parents are like, I can't listen. I can't bend over. And like it, it, I can't breathe when I tie my shoes. Uh, I can't, my dad had a heart attack last week and I'm nervous about it. Right. Or the lady I put on the dress that I always look nails in and I, I saw myself and I was embarrassed. Right. And so I can't throw the football to my son. Right. My They're coming to hurts. you in a, in a, in a vulnerable emotional <clears throat> state. And one of the other things you must do with your content and your personality is create a, a way to, to, to be where people can approach you. You've got to be approachable so that it tears down the wall. The first thing we're trying to do as a coach is tear down the walls of like, I need to know if my clients are arguing with their wife at night, if their kid was up all night throwing up and they didn't sleep. Like, you know, I can make adjustments to your workout because again, I care about you. And so those Dude. things are really important. So you're, you're, again, you're meeting the need. You're, you're, you're fixing their problem. You're addressing their problem. And that's how they find you. There's a uh, former Navy SEAL on YouTube. And of course that your, those accolades draw people in. We all know that. And uh, man, I forget his name, but it's uh, the three of seven <laughs> project. And he does these 
videos like from the car and yep. just like and but he what what i'm noticing is he gets people to believe in themselves and people yeah. love him for it and then he's like hey man you like the show he's like buy a t-shirt man buy a hat yeah <laughs> and right. i could only imagine he's selling hundreds of hats yeah. and t-shirts all the problems he, and and you want to know what a big problem men have matt i know you've seen this which i believe strength uh, i don't want i don't know, i don't want to say it solves i believe it does solve problem there's a lot of um, middle-aged men who still have the insecurity of a 15 year old boy. They oh, don't sure. have confidence. And it's, you know, that to me is like, I don't want, I don't know if that's like a pain point, but I, tr I've trained adult men who are late thirties, early forties. And it's like, Whoa, I'm, I feel like I'm talking to a 15 year old here who's yep. still scared of the world. And what that tells me is, let me get this guy stronger. Let me build muscle. Yeah, then watch let what happens. <clears throat> yes. He comes out of his shell. He doesn't become arrogant, right? And this is, I think, the difference between us and, and a lot of times. I'm not, I don't want to shit on bodybuilders, but people who are just there to like have a beauty pageant with other dudes instead of stand up on stage is not really what we do. So I think a lot of times people see bodybuilders or huge, huge jacked guys and like, yeah, they're arrogant. Like, no, we're not talking about building that. We're talking about building self confidence, a healthy level of self confidence to solve these problems, right? Like, dude, how many of these same guys are business executives that have imposter syndrome? Yes. They're going to their job. They're a COO. They're an accountant. And like, dude, I don't know that I should be. I don't know that I'm qualified for this job. And then they get strong and they're like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to get better at my job. I'm going to learn what I can, you know? And for me, again, that those, the challenge for me was competitive lifting first, I, it was tackling the challenge of becoming a competitive powerlifter and strongman, and then a coach. And, and I, I don't have any of those things totally figured out, but you know, I've coached 40,000 hours. And so like, I feel confident in my coaching ability. And over the last several years, it's been business owner and CEO. Like that's the challenge for me. I still love to coach. I still love to train. These are things that are part of my life and will always will be, but the challenge for me. So it's finding off in that time, that, that thing that is the challenge that you want to overcome. And what's wild about strength training is how much it carries over to all those things. It doesn't just make you physically better and improve your life. It makes you mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually often better. Like the, those things that matter because all improve. I think you and I are where we are thanks to strength training. It That's was right. like the very thing that uh, propelled us. So we're, we're going to close it down soon. We didn't really tackle like the group training um but what what hit me is you know you mentioned like hitting a pr i was like man there's even online powerlifting meets online weightlifting oh, yeah. meets yeah we love those we do yes, them all the time i know um you see other uh podcasts also doing it and it, it just you, the reason why i bring it up is because it was another reminder of how people are like yeah i don't give a shit if i some people like just doing their thing in their house yeah. and don't want to go Yep. Uh, to the meet all day. Uh, to me, that's very hard to do with uh, kids in sports. For like sure. if you're like, Zach, come do this thing for a whole weekend. I'm like, damn, who's taking my daughter to the tennis tournament while my son has a that's baseball right. tournament in another state. That's and right. so uh, I often say convenience and excellence are rarely found on the same road. But in this case, uh, we favor convenience and so um, my online clients are, are, are pretty cool. It's pretty interesting, like the things that they do for work. And then these little, um, hey, I don't have this equipment at this time because, That's right. you know, this so you got packed up. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So let's talk about, um, I've sent workouts to teams, but I haven't really per se locked down a team. How yep. would, you know, you're forget to say you're training a team is a, you know, an understatement with the air force so yeah we got this huge group of eod guys right so explosive ordnance disposal these are the crazy bastards who who disarm bombs i mean these these people are crazy but awesome badasses thank you for your service <laughs> for real right uh every time i'm there i go and meet these guys at their at their at their flight at the at the eod building Every one of those has a hallway of memorials of like all the people they've lost and dude they're 21 year old kids and I just try to stand there for a minute and I, man, I don't want to get choked up. It's like, listen, 
we coach people to improve their quality of life. And, but yet when uh, we're coaching these air force guys, these EOD guys, it's like the, the standard is raised a little bit because you're like, listen, this is not just about improving the quality of life of, of an executive. This is improving the quality of life and performance of people who protect us on a daily basis. And so how do we, how do we coach hundreds of those people? Well, We've got a good team of coaches. So again, I think it's hard to do with one person. We don't have a huge team of coaches. We have maybe six or seven of our coaches that coach these guys. We've trained them specifically. We put them through an academy specifically to focus on what we call tactical athletes, and you know, which mostly is just soldiers at this point. But we we teach them how to how to coach. We lay out some basic templates of here's how we would basically lay out their programming and then be very clear about we don't want cookie cutter stuff. Don't copy and paste this in. If you copy and paste, make changes for the individual. Because some of these guys want to be more athletic and do more kind of crossfit stuff that's like low impact and low skill. Like they're already doing crazy stuff. They're putting on 60 pound rucks and they're rucking and their knees are all shot. So like, if you're going to do, you know, energy systems training, you don't want to beat them up. You've got to do stuff that doesn't beat them up. So it's prowler and it's, and it's echo bike and it's the rower and it's stuff like that. And, you know, body weight stuff and accessories. And so, and so we just have a good system for how to train those guys and move them from, you know, novice training to intermediate training to more. And, and that novice training is very general and that as they get more advanced, it becomes more specific to their goals. And so like we, we have a set, we have a system of standards, strength standards that we, that we're like, look, all of you should be able to hit this, you know, X body weight on squat, bench press, press and deadlift. And when you hit that, we're going to move you more towards specific goals for you, if you want to do hypertrophy, we'll focus more on hypertrophy. If you want to do more athletic stuff, if you need to improve your PFA score, which is a big piece of that, we'll do that. <clears throat> a, a, a big reason the government hired us in the first place is to reduce injuries. And so, you know, a reduction of injuries to have more combat ready guys. And then so then here's what you do in the beginning. When you when you coach these groups, you start with like pure encouragement, dude. It's pure encouragement. It's just like <clears throat> you're. it's not it's not it's not um, artificial, like it's authentic. But you're trying to encourage them to just buy in and do the thing. You're building consistency, right? And as time goes on, I love the competitive atmosphere of, of this stuff. And so another thing we have at Turnkey Coach is we have a leaderboard that you can parse out for everybody that's on Turnkey Coach. And then you can see how you stack up against the world for the whole world, your age group, your body weight. But also we can divide that up by EOD flights they can see how they stack up on their EOD flight and they can see how their EOD flight compares to other EOD flights, which is really cool. Now what we do because we follow like strict HIPAA guidelines and all that stuff is we automatically anonymize people on the leaderboard. So they're like client number 351. Oh. And then they can click a button that says, I want my name to be on here. Well, what do you think the top 50 guys do? That's they all turn awesome. their names on because they want people to know like this is who, you know, I'm, I'm in the top 10 at, you know, turnkey coach or barbell logic and so i think you start with encouragement when you when you coach these groups and then you slowly start to build in the competitive atmosphere and you and that entire time you're building a core value of like look this competitive atmosphere is still there for like encourage each other don't like uh, you know you you kind of know each guy or each person obviously we, we train ladies as well in in the system but you know some people handle that competition better and some less and you figure out where to push and where, you know, sometimes I'll say, like, sometimes I have guys that I'll say, listen, you're doing great. You just hit the same deadlift my wife hit a couple years ago. And it's, you know, you're kind of busting their balls a little bit. Yeah, and there's other guys that, like you would never say that because you they would just like be dejected and they would quit. And so that's one of your jobs as a coach, man. We are, for lack of a better term, we are psychiatrists on some level with our clients. And you ha that's why you have to build a relationship with your clients because you have to know. What are the right buttons to push? Who needs the encouragement? Who needs a little bit of butt kicking, right? Who needs a little bit of getting their ass chewed? Who needs some competition? Who needs to not have that and kind of shield them from it? That's our job as coach. And so as you start to, but what you'll see is you'll see, you build the system, you build the efficiency, you kind of know the general direction you're going to take most of these, <clears throat> these teams or groups. And then you slowly start to become more specific, add in the competition, let them compete with each other, high five in each other in, on competition, not, you know, go F yourself competition. Like I'm trying, it's not that it's because you're trying to build team cohesiveness. I mean, it, especially for a guy like you that trains a lot of athletes competition is that's, that's what Dude, they're doing. What you're saying is a missing link at my school. And I had this conversation with many coaches the past few weeks because uh, 
we don't have a record board and da da da. And a friend said to me, got to. He's like, listen, yep. He's like, listen, athletes may not like to train. He's like, but they like to compete. Yeah. And they and he's like, uh, I've seen schools put like almost like street signs, <clears throat> and it'll say three fifteen bench. Matt yep. Reynolds, John Smith, yep. Jake, you know, da da da. Uh, but oh, I want my name up there. Well, you know, but if that sign is not up, they don't know. you know, they don't know. So they said, listen, you got to gamify stuff. I thought it was really interesting that oh, you great. had the option to be anonymous. Right. Um, <clears throat> and so there's also like a speed program out there. Uh, Tony Holler in Chicago, he runs a program called Feed the Cats. And he says three things. Um record rank publish he yep. goes so you see anybody who's in his program they're recording like flying 10 flying 20 and then they share it on instagram what That's kid right. doesn't want to be shown in the top 10 That's of right. the 40 yard dash or the 100 meter run so uh, what you're and then doing what does that add it adds a <clears throat> tremendous amount of accountability to these to the to yes. your to your athletes to your clients because <clears throat> Bro, like now, I, like I've done the same thing. I've lost sixty pounds this year, and I and it's see, been a I'm long. I'm looking at you. I'm like Matt is a, looking <laughs> svelte. Thanks. It's been a long process, but you know, part of that is like I made some vulnerable posts on social media to to create some accountability there. I wanted to be held accountable. I didn't. You know, I've done the, I, you know, you know, since my competitive years, I've done the whole like go up to two eighty, come down to two sixty, two forty, to go up to three hundred, come. Like I didn't want to like, dude, I'm in my mid forties. I'm a CEO. It's time to like, I don't need to weigh 300 pounds anymore. I'm not a competitive professional strongman. And so, so you by posting <laughs> that up there, there's some accountability and it's the same thing with online coaching. If you're actually not just selling programs, but you're actually breaking down technique and talking to your clients via screen recording on a daily basis or three, four times a week, however often they're training, then that provides that accountability. They know, dude, when they hit record, you know, I, like, you know, I've trained Brett McKay from Art of Manliness for like yes. 10 years at this point. Dude, that guy doesn't need coaching for me. He knows that guy could easily, I could hire him as a coach tomorrow. He, he's he got a great coaching eye. He knows how to program. His form is perfect. <clears throat> Yet he stays. Why? Because he knows when he yeah. hits record on the phone, on the last set of squats, coach is going to watch it. And it raises the standard and it raises the accountability and it raises the compliance and the consistency of your clients. They don't. They don't miss, you know, if you just sell programs, your client could just lie to you and say they did it. But oh, yeah. for us, like you posting a video, <clears throat> I can see if you did this thing. And that stuff matters for sure. A hundred percent. So, this, you know, we could chat all day. You're my bro. Um, let's uh, shout out some links for sure. people to start getting into the world of Barbell Logic, Turnkey Coaching, and uh, like maybe what. I'm sure somebody's going to kind of want to jump the gun and be like, I, I want to apply to sure. be on your team and I'm sure. quitting my job. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. So, and again, what's nice about that is that you don't have to, like you can still work a 40 hour week and add one hour a day and make a bunch of money as an online coach. So it's, so this is, again, as I, one of the things I always try to do with calls to action is I'm not, I don't want to sell something, right? Like people, if people know me great. And if some of those people like, go through it fast and they decide to buy something that's great. But what I want to do is give them high value content. And so they can go to turnkey.coach slash 5X, turnkey.coach slash 5X. And one of the, and we are about to come out with in the next, in the next week or two, I think by Black Friday at the latest, we've got a great online course that's a hundred percent free. There's no catch. There's no questions asked. We don't even, we're not even going to take your, like you don't even have to put in an email address or anything like it's not about that for us. It's about, it is just walking through. It's about 10 videos. I think that are all pretty short, five minutes or less. And there's, there's some great reference material that's attached. It's a hundred percent free that you can use and go, here's how I be, here's how I five X my dollar per hour in the online coaching sphere. Here's how I do this. Well, here's how I develop these systems. All the stuff we talked about today, it dives into the actual details of that gets into the trenches and teaches people how to do that. So it's a completely free course. And then here's the thing. I just also want to be clear. The reason we make that content for coaches, the reason we make our content for clients is we know a percentage of those people that 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 consume that content will drive down the funnel and eventually become paying clients or paying coaches. That's fine. I'm not going to worry about that piece. My piece is how do I provide as much value with this free content as possible? Because we're not a content company. We're a service company. 
give people value. And then people, there will be a percentage of those people that see us as experts in the field, whether as coaches, clients are looking at that or as other coaches. And they're like, man, Barbell Logic's really figured out this efficiency game. Their coaches make a ton of money. I want to move that direction as well. Cool. Here's a course that you can learn exactly how to do that. And then if you decide to be a paying client down the road, that's fine. Right. So for me, I think we're in a position. It's like, I don't have to sell, like, I'm not going to send somebody to like, Hey, here's where you go sign up and pay us money. Like do your research, right? Look at our YouTube channel, listen to our podcast. By the way, the other kind of shameless plug I'll give is on Fridays over the past couple months, um, I, I'm doing a, what's called a coaching success series on our podcast. They're pretty short, like 20 minutes long monologue podcast. And it's all the lessons I've learned in business. Dude, I remember the, remember the DVD you and Joe came out with years ago. Dude, I bought that for That's whatever, right. 200 bucks or whatever, like Lost 15 years, years ago. Strength. That's right. And I, and I, and like that, <clears throat> I invested in my education there. This is great because there's no investment. Like it's free for us. Like we've been in a position now that we've been blessed and we can make this stuff. And of course there's a tremendous amount of cost and production value to do it. But we have this, again, this attitude of abundance. If I can get more expert coaches, one, more expert coaches made, and two, more of the expert coaches that are out there to not just coach 10 or 12 or 15 people, but coach 60 people, 10 or 12 in person and another 50 online, dude, we can change the world for the better. Like, <laughs> I used to have a podcast partner. He's like, if everybody in the world deadlifted, I think we would have world peace. Oh, my right. And, and maybe that's over. Guys, maybe that's, no, <laughs> I remember you saying guys. it, but. I remember you guys saying that. It's um, a big and listen, deal. Matt, I also think like a lot of people to hear, oh, 50 clients. I don't know. Well, that's again, I'm going to go back to it. And I know you're not, we said we're not plugging anything, but what I've learned through coaching coaches is a lot of them, they're not good at business. You give them business stuff, they don't want to learn it. Okay. Yeah. Then you should probably go under the Barbell Logic Turnkey Coach umbrella. Learn yep. to be a great coach and let them feed you the clients. But, by so the way, you can coach. That's right. For the highest tier that we sell for turnkey coaches, five bucks a client. Right. So it's not like if you coach at Barbell Logic, we take about $90 per client because we do everything. For turnkey coach, it's five bucks a client and it's it will 5X your dollar per hour. And so that's, and, and by the way, the first month is always 100% free. We always do that. I would say we didn't get into this as, as, a, as a technique. I think you have to, as a coach, remove as much friction as possible for clients to sign up and utilize your service. If your service is great and you believe in it, give them a taste for free. Like, it's fine. Like, every coach that comes on and uses Turnkey Coach gets their first month 100% free. And then we have a CX team that helps walk you through and help transition you and onboard you and teach you the software. And, Smart. you know, when you first, that's, that's, and so that by a month in, they're like, okay, I love this. Or they don't. And they go do something else. And there's, again, there's no risk because they didn't have to pay anything. And so that's, that's, I think the advantage that we have at the size I, that we are at this point. Yeah. I love it. Cause really I have found, you know, I'm in my office, I'm surrounded by training books, lots of business books, but you know, you mentioned buying that, um, we called it the lost secrets of strength. It was a, uh, seminar that we recorded, but long story short, like leaving, I remember, being in like monthly newsletters from Dan Kennedy, it was like $700 a month, $800 yeah. a month. I was getting a newsletter every two weeks, audio CD. I invested in my business. I thought that was normal. What I'm learning from coaches is they can't stand business. And they're, they're like, you know what? I'm not even going to coach. Cause I hate yep. doing all this business shit. Yep. And so somebody like you is doing to me, that's awesome because there are great coaches who are just refusing to learn business who would be great. You're a great employee, but you're kind of a little bit self-employed. You just need somebody that's kind of managing yeah. that thing. For you. So and, and that's really what the purpose of this is. It's not, it's, it's you know, I hope I know in the beginning, people are going to compare us to the other programming softwares out there. But the reality is, is all <clears> the other programming <throat> softwares are programming softwares. This is a complete turnkey business model. It's the, yes, it's programming software. But we also teach you how to break down client videos. Again, we handle all the payment processing. Like we make it super easy so you can do what you do best, which is coach. And so, and, and my last pitch will be this is to you specifically, you are the perfect coach for a thing like this because you've got a big name, you've got a good following, you've built a ton of content over the years. You I'm know how to check coach, it out. Yeah. You know how to I, online coach. Dude, if I can <clears throat> take your amount of time you're spending online coaching now and cut it by 80%, then either A, you spend a lot less time online coaching and making the same money, or B, you get to 
double, triple, quadruple your number of clients for the same amount of time. And like, you're perfect for this because you've got a reach already. You can, you could post and you could get 50 or a hundred people sign up in two days right now. I want you test it out. I want you to test it out, but like, you're perfect for this because it's just going to make all that system more efficient for you. I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, of course we'll chat after this, but, uh, sure. it's interesting. I'm watching some people on fit, you know, the algorithm's interesting. Cause as we've been talking, I'm like, how do I not come across Matt's videos anymore? Why doesn't the stupid algorithm feed me yeah. his stuff? But I'm watching people who um, had gyms, closed it down during COVID. They're still sharing on Facebook training yep. tips. And it's like, hey, your Facebook friends will jump at- Perfect, they, perfect they, transition. That's they, exactly trust, right. they trust you already, or at least there's a good amount of trust. And so um, I think it's cool. So um, I'm going to link that up. Turnkey. Awesome. Dot Turnkey. Coach dot coach slash 5X. Yep. Yes, sir. 5X. That's all you want to shout out? Yeah, man. Just go to that because I think that walks you through how to do this and do it well. And then if you decide to move forward with the coaching piece, you can do it. Like there's no reason to, I don't Beautiful. need to sell anything. So awesome. Dude. Thanks for giving me the time to have this conversation. I think it's a great discussion. Actually, I get to go on Coach Mike Boyle on his this afternoon and have the same conversation and, and same yeah. thing you know coach boy was like dude i do everything in person <clears throat> and i you know my my coaches are doing this and they're they're all burned out because they're coaching in person so i'm like dude it doesn't have to be that way there's a better way so you know we've got a webinar this afternoon we're going to do it with his team That's and, very and cool. i just want to have the conversation right and I'm if you decide don't yeah. use us but like i think just having that cover you know maybe you use another third-party software that's not ours but like i think getting people out of the mindset of, I have to just coach in person. I can't scale this. I'm working 40, 50, 60 hours a week to, to make more money. I got to go 70 hours a week. There is a better way. You can't, you don't have to keep coaching more people in person at the same location on the schedule. You can have freedom from that. Go on vacation to Mexico with your family and get paid to continue to coach. That is like, that's why we all became business you train owners, entrepreneurs. adults. I wouldn't be shocked with some adults who are like, you know what? I live in town. Your gym's in town. I think I just want to come once a week and I want That's to do right. this other stuff in my Perfect basement model. twice a week. That's exactly right. I believe there would be a lot of people who just- They would crush. Especially, you know, I think of it as a lot of ways. Women, I know here we um, said we're stuck. Women would be like, you know what? I'm just going to train in my pajamas. One guy that I train, he- <laughs> He just wears his underwear and a tank top. He's like, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> nice. So you can't do that at the local cross no. or whatever. So it's like you Pachinko, know. right? <laughs> that's right. So like the old Russians squatting in their whitey tighties. He he comes home very late at night from because of his business. And listen, convenience, boom, boom, bang it out. It, it's yep. cool. So this is a, a conversation to be continued. Uh, with sure. You, um and uh, that's it matt you're the man awesome everybody Thanks, listening dude. strong life podcast make sure you leave a five-star review that's like our virtual bro handshake and uh, i always say this is uh the podcast is free for you but it's not free for us so we just hope that you maybe share it with a friend leave a five-star review help spread the word and uh, that's it matt hang tight while i shut it down so we can have a proper goodbye talk yes, to everybody next time